Hallelujah. Good morning, everybody. May the Lord bless you this morning in Jesus' name. Pastor Yemi, thank you again. Thank you and your dear wife. I honor you. Let's give them a big, big hand clap. Thank you. In the name of Jesus Christ. I also honor every man and every woman of God here. May the Lord honor you in Jesus' name. Be Daniel, so good to see you. God bless you. In the name of Jesus. Let's lift our hands in one minute and ask the Lord to visit us yet again. To visit us yet again. It is always by his word. Visit us yet again. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. When God wants to help a man, he shortens the distance between you and your access to light. The distance between you and your access to light. In this kingdom, the basis for dominion is light he made two great lights one to rule the day and the other to rule in the night john 1 5 and the light shineth in the darkness and the darkness comprehended it not and so when god really wants to help a man he shortens the distance between that man and access to light true light because there are false lights. The Bible says that was the true light that lighted upon every man. Hallelujah. Conferences like this, I would always observe, they are feasts of light. So here's how it works. Since light is the conveyor, revelations create transitions in the spirit. Every time you access light, it stops you from remaining at that level. It is a vehicle that translates you to higher levels and dimensions in the spirit. Are we learning now? And so conferences like this give us an opportunity to receive different dimensions of light that build us, equip us, so that with accuracy and precision we can press towards our kingdom adventure. Conferences like this close the gaps in our spiritual understanding so that there is no haziness. The Bible says, he that strives for mastery is not crowned, is not, um, crowned until he strives lawfully. Hallelujah. Let your light come, O God, and grant us access in Jesus' name. Please be seated. I have five revelations that the Lord placed in my heart to bring to us. I brought four yesterday, and this morning will be for the final one. But let me do a very quick recap. Yesterday I taught on the river of life. And um, there are four important things I said yesterday that is important I remind us. Number one, that there are three gifts that everyone receives at the point of salvation. That when you encounter Jesus Christ at the new birth experience, there are three gifts. Number one is called the forgiveness of sin. Do not forget this. Number two, the gift of righteousness. And then number three, abundant life or zoe as we call it. You must be conscious of these threefold blessings. The forgiveness of sins. The, the gift of righteousness and abundant life. The second thing I said yesterday is that abundant life, or we call it life through his son, is the greatest of all these three gifts. The gifts are powerful, but they are not all equal in value. The greatest gift God gave man is not the forgiveness of sin. It's not even the gift of righteousness. It is his life. Are we together now? And I define for you that life here, according to John 10, 10, is not just the ability to exist without dying. 
it is not just about being alive. I told you that life here is the summation of every component that upgrades a man to the God class. You still remember? So when the Bible talks about life, you have to understand Bible mentality in describing life. He's not just talking about biological life. He's not just talking about a life better than what we have. It is a quality of life. In fact, um, John puts it as eternal life and it's translated in English eternal life, but um, it's not an accurate translation because the, the, the suggestion eternal just means forever living. It is not a quality you need to believe us. All men have eternal life uh, because beyond this life, we still exist. Whether with God or in eternal damnation, so the concept of cessation of living does not exist. It is only to be absent in the body. But non-existence is not a concept that exists. Are we together now? Everything is alive. It's just in another phase and another dimension. So when we preach, we ask people, where do you want to spend eternity? The question is location, not possibility. Whether you are Lazarus or you are the rich man, you will be somewhere and you will be alive there. So the life God gave us is not necessarily eternal. That's not the, it's, it's a quality of life, not just the longevity of it. Are we learning now? It's a quality of life, imputing in you every component that is in the Christ that upgrades you to the God class. And I did tell us yesterday that the striking difference between humans and animals it's not necessarily their body frame because there are animals that are infinitely bigger than humans. It's not even their speed. It is the quality of life. That means when Satan comes to attack an individual, what he's looking for is attacking every component in your life that makes you become an expression of God in experience. Hallelujah. It's very important that we understand this. Fellowship with God, we said, for instance, wisdom, intelligence, abundance, power, health, and vitality. These are all the components that summed together is called life. Hallelujah. The fourth thing or the third thing I told us yesterday is that the Holy Spirit is both the conveyor and the administrator of the life of God. It's important we understand this. The Holy Spirit is the conveyor. That means when you receive the life of God at the new birth experience, I know we generally say Jesus has come to your heart, and you are right, but um, theologically speaking, the personality that comes to represent the life of Jesus in honor to that prayer is the Holy Spirit. Jesus is at the right hand of the Father as a person. Are we together? The Holy Spirit answers to his name. He honors that prayer by coming. He's a representation of the life of God. So I'm saying that he is both the conveyor and the administrator of the life of God in man. Romans 8 and verse 2 calls him the spirit of life. It was at that point yesterday that we introduced this name of the Holy Spirit as the spirit of life. And in John chapter 7 37 to 39, Jesus said out of our bellies, he was speaking at the last day of the feast, that out of our bellies will flow rivers of living water. Still remember that? When we get to verse 39, the Bible says, this speak he of the Holy Ghost. So he was not just speaking about a literal river. It was a metaphor describing the life-giving ministry of the Spirit. Again, it was a metaphor. The flowing river was a metaphor describing the life-giving ministry of the Holy Spirit. The life-giving ministry of the Holy Spirit is described in that metaphor of a flowing river. And we examine a few operations, life-giving operations of the Holy Spirit. We saw that the Holy Spirit is responsible for fruitfulness. He shall be like a tree, Psalm 1 verse 3, that is planted by the riverside. The basis for the fruitfulness 
is the fact that it was planted and its encounter with that river. We saw restoration as in Isaiah 41 verse 18, the life-giving ministry of the Holy Spirit. We saw renewal and hope. I will pour water upon him who is thirsty. Isaiah 44 and verse 3. We saw peace. You still remember this? Yes. That peace is part of the life-giving ministry of the Holy Spirit. We saw righteousness and justice. The administration of righteousness and justice as the life-giving ministry of the Holy Spirit. And we prayed yesterday asking the Lord to grant us access to this life-giving ministry. Now, for today, well, I'm speaking very briefly on life-giving spirits, still extending my teaching yesterday, life-giving spirits. So we'll start today from John 7 again, where we left off yesterday. Jesus was speaking and he said on the final day of the feast, verse 37 now, he said, if any man thirst, any man at all, any man thirst, he says to come and to drink. And then he says, verse 38, that out of his belly shall flow. Take note. Out of his belly shall flow rivers. Now, literally, that does not make sense because a river needs space. And yet he's saying there's something within a man. Are we together now? As frail as we are, that rivers can flow to us. And the Bible says, this spake he of the Holy Spirit. He was speaking of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has a twofold operation, generally speaking, as a life giving spirit. The first dimension of his operation is within the believer, and the second dimension of the believer is from or through the believer. Two operations of the Spirit, as far as the administration of life is concerned. So he flows through you, doing the work of transformation doing the work of empowerment. When you are transformed and empowered, you get to that realm of overflow and he now flows out from you to the nations. Please note this. When the Holy Spirit comes, he does not flow. He fills you first. It is when you are filled that overflow begins. Are we together now? It is very important you know that because there are many people who receive the Holy Spirit and the next thing they want is to be used of him. That's not how he works. When he comes as a life-giving spirit, his first assignment is not the witness, it is the vessel. There is something he does to the vessel to make that vessel worthy of being a witness. Are we learning now? So the mistake that many believers make is on their encounter with the Holy Spirit, all they want is to be used. Be used in ministry, be used in business, be used as ambassadors and witnesses. That's not how the economy of heaven works. When the Holy Spirit comes, his next assignment or his major assignment for a long period of time is an inner work in the believer. Ephesians chapter 3, from verse 16 to 20, when you read, you see that do we have it projected? The Bible says that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might through his spirit. Where? In the inner man. In the inner man. So there is a work he's doing in you. He comes to your life and for a very long time you would not see any fruit happening in terms of your witness because there is, his assignment is building the vessel. Now, let me tell you the truth. To the degree to which you allow him build you, that is the degree to which the river will flow efficiently. The flow of the river is interrupted by the quality of the vessel that hosts that river. So when it looks as if the river is not flowing effectively to the nations, it is not that the potential of the river has been subdued. It is that the channel has not been well prepared and equipped. 
Are we together? In desiring the river to flow, our focus should not be the river. Our focus should be the channel. I came in yesterday and there was a lot of rain in Lagos. The problem is not the water. The water is an advantage. The reason why it seemed to punish a lot of people with all due respect is that something is wrong with the channel system. Am I right on that? That means if you, you cannot stop the rain from coming, it was designed to come. It will come in its capacity. Your farm is praying for it, but your roads ate it. The reason is not because the water is bad. Are we learning now? So the business of this flowing river, this let it flow concept is a command, but the focus is not the water, the river, the spirit. He has been ever efficient. He is God. The major problem interrupting the flowing of the river is the quality of the vessel. We do not allow him to do that inner work. The work of transformation. So the Bible says in a great house, there are various kinds of vessels. They are called vessels, but their capacities and the quality of their delivery is not the same. There are vessels of clay, of wood, of silver, and gold. Here's what the Bible says. Some vessels, by their alignment, they are unto honor. And some vessels are unto dishonor. It says, if a man will purge himself, that man will become a vessel unto honor, meat for the master's use. Hallelujah. The work of transformation. When the Holy Spirit comes into the life of a man, a believer, that work of transformation, what is transformation? I will tell you, transformation is the name given to the process that makes you become like Christ in experience. It is the name given to the process. It's a journey with the Holy Spirit through his word, cleansing, renewing, purifying you until you become an expression of the Christ in reality. Perhaps I should say this. Please lend me your attention for one minute. At the point you receive eternal life, what part of you is saved? Because it is not all of you. Man is tripartite by design. It's important for you to know the initial part of you that is affected by that salvation. The imputation of eternal life is an entirely spirit affair. Are we together? Your mind is still as unfruitful as you were before you came to the altar. So when the Holy Spirit comes, his next assignment is to filter that life through the gates of your mind. Because your mind will become a useful tool in partnership with your spirit for being a witness. Now, most believers do not allow that ministry continue because our theology of receiving the Holy Spirit is that once you can pray in tongues, we believe you are done. No, that is supposed to be a, it's like the ability to pray in tongues is like a, it's like a sound check to be sure you are okay for the work to start. You know how you do a sound check on a mic? It doesn't mean the program is finished. You are doing a sound check to make sure that everything is working well. So your praying in the spirit is like a spiritual sound check. All right, now you have received all the tools for your transformation. I can tell you the difference between any two believers in terms of the, their capacity in the spirit and the quality of delivery taking advantage of the investment of the spirit is not necessarily the election of grace it's not necessarily the will of god for the same lord is rich unto all it is the degree to which they have allowed these inner workings of the spirit as that river walks within you building character walking upon your mind helping you in experience to access the mind of Christ because your mind is a gateway. The possibilities in the spirit flow through your mind and to the degree to which your mind is scripture compliant, the degree to which your mind is healthy. Here's what the Bible says. It says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. The major part of the believer's journey is not manifestation, it's transformation. The quality of your manifestation depends on the excellency of your transformation. Let me say that again. The quality, the efficiency of your manifestation, the efficiency of your witness 
is predicated upon the quality of your transformation. Are we learning? So, watch this. We have two believers saved the same day, same measure of the Spirit, let's say, mentored under the same man of God. But you may find out that one would have such a rich and compelling Christian experience in terms of his results and his witness. Whereas another person, you almost doubt whether that person is saved. I can tell you the difference. The difference is the space they have both given the Holy Spirit to flow through based on their level of transformation. If you say you love God, you don't sing it. You yield yourself to be transformed so that you become a greater host of his possibilities. This is what Jesus was saying. That if any man thirst, so it starts from you. There must be an awareness that you are thirsty. Let him come and drink. And that when he drinks, the Holy Spirit becomes first within him that river when you are filled to overflow then he begins to flow through you to the nations our witness is ineffective because we have not placed so much value on the inner work of the spirit please listen to me again our witness is ineffective the reason why it looks like there are a handful of people scattered across the globe doing exceptional things as far as the witness is concerned is not God's predeterminate counsel. The cry of Jesus when he walked upon the earth is that the laborers are few. He said your intercession should not even be for the harvest. The problem is not the harvest. The problem is the inefficiency of the laborers. He said, when you pray, prioritize praying for the laborers. Nothing is wrong with the harvest. It is the strength of your sickle that determines the, 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 the wheat is obedient if the sickle is sharp. If you struggle at the field, it is simply because your witness is poor. Acts 4.33, with great power, gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ and great grace was upon them all. Are we learning already? This is very important that the life-giving ministry of the Holy Spirit is not just to make you a witness. He makes you an effective vessel. And let me submit to you that journey is the most painful journey in every believer's journey. The journey of transformation because that journey will kill many things before bringing others alive. Did you hear what I said? It is a very painful journey because it is a journey of death. Jesus said there is a relationship between death and glory. He said, except a corn of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it abides alone. When the farmer is throwing seeds, he does not hate the seeds. He wants a harvest. But the first thing that happens to the seed is not fruitfulness. The first thing that happens to the seed is death. When the farmer comes and sees the seed decaying, he does not cry. He knows that out of that death, life is coming. Are we together? The life-giving ministry of the Holy Spirit will look like death for a long time until life comes. I pray you understand what I'm teaching you. Because... Our theology about God is what affects our ability to yield or otherwise. If you do not know that the journey to being a prepared vessel takes a while, it will take the deadening of many things. There were things in your mind, there were components that were antichrist before God met you. He's not going to use you the way you are. You come as you are but you have to yield for transformation. And because he's not a demon spirit, he will not force transformation on you. So there is no time allotted for your transformation. It is your yieldedness that defines the time. For someone in one year, he can yield to such a degree that great power and grace is emanated from that person. For another, your yieldedness becomes so slow, it's almost as if the Holy Ghost is not in you. Hallelujah. Most of the people who become effective witnesses were not even conscious of manifestation. They stayed 
and said, God, build me. Build me to become the vessel that can host that river. How many of you have seen a dam pure, poorly built? And sometimes, because the dam is poorly built, it can cause catastrophe when you fill it with water. You need to study the architecture that is deployed in building a dam because of the quantity of water it takes. Are we together? The engineers have to go through the rigor of building. Sometimes it takes as much as six years. And the problem is not lack of funds. It is like that. They have to allow certain concrete to stay. They test, they stress test. They do it again and again. But when that dam is built and water comes, when they want to open it officially to flow, you dare not stand the way of that river. It will sweep anything before it because of the quality of the dam. Ladies and gentlemen, hear me. This message does not stop with the Holy Ghost. The greater responsibility of let the river flow is the vessel. Are we together now? So I told you that the Holy Spirit has a twofold work as far as his life-giving ministry is concerned. Number one is the inner work of transformation and empowerment. Don't forget this. Transformation and empowerment. And there are enhancers to that ministry. Number one is called the ministry of the word. The transforming, the transforming and empowering ministry of the Holy Spirit does not happen outside of the word. Transformation depends on the word. So you must submit yourself to the ministry of the word. Number two, you must submit yourself to prayer. This is the apostolic model that was used by the church in Acts chapter 2 and verse 42. The Bible says, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and in fellowship, in breaking of bread and in prayer. That was a model that was handed over to them. That in seeking to enjoy the life-giving ministry of the Holy Spirit, that ministry of transformation and empowerment, the prerequisite is that you must submit yourself to the ministry of the word you must submit yourself to the ministry of prayer Acts chapter 6 and verse 4 but we will give ourselves continually continually to the to prayer and the ministry of the word someone say prayer please shout again say prayer say the ministry of the word that means every time you submit yourself to prayer the study of the word reading books engaging in quality christian materials you are working in partnership with the holy spirit do that work of transformation you are giving him the tools that he will use to birth that transformation as you invest time in prayer there is a purging there is a purifying there's no time to teach you the assignment of prayer but according to scripture there are four assignments of prayer in the life of the believer the primary assignment of prayer is for growth and transformation Luke chapter 9 and verse 29 the Bible says and as he prayed the fashion of his countenance was altered and his raiment became white and glistering beyond obtaining requests a major part of the prayer ministry is like how a snake molds you mold into a superior version of yourself in the place of prayer a weak you becomes a strong you a fearful you becomes a courageous you man can mold into another kind of version in the place of prayer are we learning now transformation by the word Acts chapter 20 and verse 32 and now brethren i commend you to god and to the word of his grace the bible says which is able to build you up and then to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified among them that are sanctified to build you up and give you an inheritance that means among them that are sanctified not everybody is built and not everybody has access to this inheritance but among them who are sanctified it is those who receive the word they are built and they receive an inheritance the ministry of prayer and of the word listen to me 
The ministry of prayer and the word is not limited to preachers. So many people have this narrative that until you discover that you're suddenly called into an apostolic or prophetic or pastoral ministry, then you carry it as a necessary luggage to be serious with the word of God and to be serious with the ministry of prayer. It was never so. It was the model. That is how people become great in the spirit. Are we together now? It's a non-negotiable condition that any believer who does not choose as an act of your will to submit to the ministry of the word and to submit to prayer, you have incapacitated the life-giving ministry of the Holy Spirit. So he can be in you, but can be as inert as anything. You cannot see the potential. These are the kinds of people that you doubt whether they are saved. Powerlessness is present. Lack of wisdom is present. No transformation. The only thing is that you saw them when they were confessing Jesus. That's the only reason why you still believe they are saved. Transformation by the word. As you engage in prayer something is happening to you there is the mind of Christ the way he thinks the way he analyzes life the way he sees things your mind is being renewed and upgraded in this in experience do you know the primary assignment of the prince of this world is not even to attack the saints it is to blind them to work on something about your mind. Because even if Satan does not exist, if all the demons today decide to go on break for one year, the saints will still fail. Because Satan is not the only limitation. A greater limitation is your transformation. In Genesis 11, Satan was not mentioned. The Holy Spirit was not mentioned. A healthy thinking was the only basis for rebuilding Babel. And God said he saw that what they had imagined, nothing would stop them. He had to confuse their language as a strategy to stop them. Satan is not the only enemy. In fact, he is already a defeated enemy. You cast him away, but you don't cast... Listen, when it has to do with eroding ignorance... You will have to submit yourself methodically to scripture. It's not something you do in one day. In one moment, you can cast out a demon, but you can't cast out ignorance. You have to submit to the word of God, line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little, until you are transformed. Are we learning now? And you see, let me tell you the truth. This school of the spirit, bar academically you can jump certain classes and read up a few weeks to the exam if you are really brilliant you can even get a but in the school of the spirit the class you miss you will pay for it whether in ministry or in destiny are we together now so when he's teaching you finance 101 and you are too busy you will be anointed, but the day there is need for that lecture, it will be evident you miss that class. If he's teaching you character 101 and you are not there, you can be anointed, but the day life comes to test that lecture, every lecture in the school of the spirit must be attended and in full. 10 over 10 attendance. If God wants to show you mercy, and you did you jump that class you will do adult education but you won't be free you will certainly have to do that class again so what happens is he covers for you while quickly teaching you he exalts your name you see god helps men by making their name great but your your name being great is not the same thing as you being great your name being great is a perception of you while he trains you to quickly match up that level. Because it takes time to be great. If your name is greater than you, you are in trouble because proximity reveals flaws. The closer people come, they will see that you are not as great as that name. So he gives you a great name. He projects a great identity about you so that people come to you with honor. And while they are celebrating that name, he says, let's walk, let's deal with this. So that by the time the nations come, you have been formed. If you get carried away by a great name and you don't stay with the spirit, as people come closer, it becomes clear that you were walking on reserve. 
How did I get here? I'm teaching on the river. Oh, river, river, river. Whose passion is tempting me? My God. Are we together? When he was blessing Abraham, he said, I will make your name great. Now, the advantage of having your name great is that others can ride on that name to be great. If you are great and your name is not great, your influence and your story dies with you. Are we together now? A good name is better to be desired than riches because a good name becomes a leverage. This is why Jesus gave us his name. He didn't just give us his life. He also gave us his name. He didn't say, in my life they shall cast out demons. He said, in my name. I know the lion. I know the lamb. I know the lion. I know the lamb. I believe in the lion. I believe in the lamb. I believe in the lion. Shalabakaparado Sabadia. Listen, for someone here, you've been itching for ministry and God is saying, just calm down. Just because you are called does not mean you are sent. This is a prophetic word. When God calls you, he calls you to himself. Then he sends you to the nations. I don't doubt your call, but have you been sent? The Bible says he called them that they should be with him then that he might send them. Because in being with him, the maker makes you. It's not only the heavens and the earth that he makes. He will furnish you. Saul becomes Paul. Abraham becomes Abraham. Sarai becomes Sarah. Are we together now? That making, he will purge your appetites. He will purge your desires. He will plant in you something you were not born with. And by the time he's done, occasionally in that training he will allow you to go for industrial practice so in the midst of that training you will go for a meeting somewhere you will see power like you have never seen then he says return to class it was just to show you to encourage you but many people immediately sign off their graduation after that first program and the deception is that people don't know whether you are being trained or not once they see you they say come again it is left for you to love your destiny enough to say I'm only on industrial training, let me go back because there is a kind of river I want to flow. Rina Simali Kapros Kabila Sobrandiva Elena Sholagadiba Lakosiata. Seven people. I'm seeing the number seven. I just saw light falling on those seven people. Shadabagabakatosiata. The Lord is calling you back to the place of making. You are made, but not enough. You are still under construction, not enough. You are Moses but not yet the deliverer. You are David but not yet my servant. I have found David but I am still looking for my servant. The one that oil will come upon is not David. It's my servant. There is a journey from David until you become my servant. He's calling you. Listen. For many. Please just help those under the anointing. Let's not be distracted. You see. There is no doubt that you are called. There is no doubt that the prophetic is there. But if you are really serious about effective witness, the key, we run in the kingdom by staying. We don't run by running. The secret of speed is to stay. The ability to stay is how we run. Why is God turning this meeting to a pastor's conference this morning? 
Halina Kaparantos Kodibas. The capacity you have within the spirit is a degree to which a demand will be placed upon you. Hear me? Listen. The Bible says if you turn aside in the day of battle, your strength is small. Why did Israel turn aside in the day of battle? Their strength was small. But there was a young boy. Where did he come from? The secret of David is where he came from. Not his family place, his place of training. Saul, don't belittle my size. In the wilderness, a lion came. There was no social media to announce it. But I tore it. I tore the bear. I know what to do. I didn't tear it by strength. I tore it by covenant. That is the basis of my defeating Goliath. And Goliath said, am I a dog? That you come to me he said you come to me with your bows and your spears but i come to you by a covenant i was trained i was furnished forged from the furnace of affliction i have capacity to bring you down that i will throw you down by the sling and i will use your own sword to cut off your head hallelujah it is true that he called you into the healing ministry but please make sure you stay before you start calling the sick to come out because there is no mercy for unfaithful servants he gave one five talent two talent one talent he gave them enough time to go and learn about investment the one with one talent would have learned from the guy with five but anger and resentment made him to leave it there and one time he came demanding stewardship you are called to the healing ministry don't produce any poster yet stay till he walks on you let a grace come from heaven upon your life that the day you call the sick with one manifestation of his power you will ride like the river the river rides with ease it clears everything before him the challenge with many believers is that our callings and our election is certain but we have not given diligence to make our callings and our election sure so there are many people wanting to do big things for god but the capacity is small you become a casualty on the journey to yourself and to all those who trust you the spirit for one minute no distraction go ahead Hallelujah. Please be seated for one minute. We look to Yahweh. Yahweh. Our hope is Yahweh. Yahweh. Yes, we look to Yahweh. Yahweh. Forever Yahweh. You see, the Bible tells us that from age 12, the last thing we hear about Jesus was he was in the temple. And that's the end of it. Where he went to, what he did. If you were in Jesus' generation, one day you will ask him, are you really a savior? Is it true that there is prophecy on your head? Because what are you doing from, I thought you would start the ministry from 14 and he would tell you, hang on. There is something I'm doing. You don't know what the cross is. You do not understand the nature and the gravity of man's sin. I know the nature of my assignment. From age 12, the next 18 years, we did not hear about Jesus. The next time he shows up, he comes to John's crusade. And John is a prophet who had been trained to identify him. Do you know that baptism was a strategy by John to identify the Christ? So he would pour water and look, you are not the one, go. He would pour water and because a sign was given to him in his place of training. And one time, 
as soon as he looked he said behold I've seen him hold on he did not see the baby that was born he did not see the teenager he saw one who had built capacity did you hear that so there are times that a prophet can come a genuine prophet he will not see you as touching your call because that version was not given for him to see John did not see baby Jesus John did not see teenager Jesus he saw Jesus who had been trained and he said behold the lamb that takes away the sins of the world and Jesus came why are you here I came to be ordained and he said no I'm not worthy based on what I've seen the capacity that I see in the spirit he said suffer it to be so that scripture may be fulfilled the Bible says he dipped it in water as soon as he came out there was a verdict from heaven this is my beloved son the question is what was he before he was a carpenter's son he was a baby but training brought him to a state this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased from that time three and a half years ministry and we've not recovered because if the axe head is blunt much energy will be exerted the reason why there is exertion of energy in evangelism exertion of energy in soul winning my god we have such laborers in the field and sometimes after one year with all due respect what what is the sickle some are even using their hands because they did not receive the sickle the sickle is given in training not at birth there are many people at the farm no sickle others are there they don't even know the difference between wheat and tears because he said let them grow you must be trained to know they all look alike many have been cutting down everything because the ill training does not make them see that there is a difference between sickle i mean the wheat and the tears are we learning the inner work of transformation it is within that time of training god will teach you compassion to be touched with the feelings of people's infirmity it is at that point he will teach you victory over satan you will be frustrated in that training till your ego is tongue and you will finally die in the year that king uzziah died then you now see there are things in the day that my pride died i saw the lord in the day my ego died in the day lost died trainings are times of death a great prophet like isaiah as great as he was he was already prophesying but he was on his own in chapter 6 while he was prophesying God was still saying who shall we send Isaiah said so what have I been doing he said send me God would have said no no not you I mean the rest he said now come let's send you my God and yet conferences were still happening and heaven was still saying who shall we send and who shall go for us the first thing that happened to Isaiah was that a life call was taken and it was purged and it says your iniquity is taken from you you are not a false prophet but there is still iniquity in you You don't like what I'm teaching? You invited me to teach on the, um, let the river flow. What did you think I was going to talk about? If you really want that river to flow, this is how it flows. So, back to Lagos. What is the solution to the flood problem? I believe the government is already working. The digging, massive digging of drainages because the rain will come for sure. Am I right? and then the clearing of certain gutters and and whilst you see them clearing it they are clearing it and it is a beautiful thing with all due respect when you go to developed nations and you see all kinds of rain but they have channeled it well and everything goes well that vessel is you and i this is not to condemn you but let me tell you the truth there is still a lot of work to be done in us ephesians chapter 3 from verse 19 and 20 please give it to us we have to pray to know the love of Christ which surpasses all knowledge that you may be filled with the fullness of God next verse it says now unto him 
who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think please finish the last line for me according to what so those possibilities are limited to the degree of his power that flows in us now when you go through that inner work of transformation I'm saying this because some of you that is the season where you are how I know is because God left you alone he took everybody away from you transformation and training is not done in the crowd he will isolate you there are things he will teach you and only you will understand is your covenant with him when that happens ladies and gentlemen at that point you are ready to be a witness then John 7 39 now happens you are filled when you are filled and you see the fullness of Christ involves three dimensions of him maybe I should say that quickly when the Bible talks about the fullness of Christ there is a theological explanation number one the nature of Christ his character number two the wisdom of Christ number three the power of Christ so every time you talk about the fullness of Christ, your mind should go to these three dimensions. Number one, the nature, the character of Christ, the fruit of the Spirit. Number two, the wisdom of Christ. Are we together now? What the Bible calls the mind of Christ. And then number three, the works of Christ. Anybody who walks in these three dimensions is operating in the fullness of Christ. You can walk in the power of Christ and not the nature of Christ. Something will be wrong with that presentation. You can walk in the wisdom of Christ and not walk in the power of Christ. You can walk in the nature of Christ and not walk in the power of Christ. But God desires witnesses who operate this threefold dimension. And every problem you see in the church through history is because one dimension was ignored or one dimension, we call it different names. I'm not speaking in a pastor's conference, but go and trace through Bible history. Every time God was misrepresented, one of these three components was found wanting. Either someone emphasized his wisdom at the expense of his nature, no character, or someone emphasized his nature and there was no power to validate his presence or someone contended for power and there was no wisdom to guide the administration of that power maybe this is a sermon for someone go back and teach your people that the fullness of Christ is a representation a wholesome representation of his nature his wisdom and his power let's say together his nature his wisdom show me a believer who is trained by the spirit to capture this I show you a mighty tool a mighty end time tool and I believe this is what God is doing even with conferences like this this is what God is doing through several vessels many of you here he is granting grace there are people who have been greatly aligned along the area of his nature others his wisdom others his power but what God is doing is he's bringing a synergy you can't say I understand his nature that means I stay there you will have great people with character but they will die of sickness they will not go forward they will not advance albeit you will see holiness and righteousness and purity then there are others you will see wisdom CEOs will come out professionals intellectuals but spiritually speaking one yoke from darkness will bring them down bring the business down because it says say unto God how terrible art thou in thy works it is through the greatness of thy power wisdom builds power retains so if the only thing you have to build is wisdom retainership is not there there will not be longevity of impact Are we learning let me tell you the truth you can test your training with the Holy Spirit by checking these three indices I just mentioned that's how you know it is God training you or it's a familiar spirit if it is another spirit training you and I'm not being sarcastic 
you will never find this tripartite formation. Only the Spirit of God has capacity to build a, a believer in a wholesome way that captures character, the nature of Christ, the wisdom of Christ. I say this with all due respect. If you are a servant of the living God here, may God grant us greater grace to be able to communicate this threefold dimension because our members will be a reflection of the degree or otherwise of our communicating this area. None of these three should be emphasized above another. This is the threefold cord that cannot be easily broken. The nature of Christ, the wisdom of Christ, the character of Christ. Are we together? And the way God trains men, I'm going to be wrapping up with that area. That when God trains men, as far as your witness is concerned, you will never be given the assignment of doing all three. No. Number one, it will weigh down on you. The biases required to be a professional in one or three of this area will not even allow you to be proficient in all three. All three will work in you, but you cannot dispense all three to the nations. He limited it that way so that the body will respect itself. Are we together? So chances are excellent that if you want to teach on character, you most likely, with all due respect, you may not go and bring maybe someone who is um, a, a general manager somewhere to come and teach you on character. You understand? Holiness, righteousness, no. The general manager may generally teach you on growth principles, how to scale your business. That is the wisdom of Christ. It doesn't mean he does not know anything about holiness. But that training, his training, he stays there. I'm teaching you this so that you know that where God trained you or what he trained you at is not the only thing required. You see, when he's teaching you on character, it will look like wisdom and power is not important. It is the bias that comes with training. It is your recognition that there are other dimensions needed in my life but not captured in my experience. So it will help you to respect other dimensions when you see and also receive it. But I can tell you this. You know that your training with the Holy Spirit is effective when you find a healthy blend of the building of the nature of Christ, the wisdom of Christ, and the power of Christ. You are not at liberty to choose which one. No. A student does not choose what the lecturer teaches him. The lecturer knows what you need to graduate. Are we together now? Some courses are boring. Some courses have greater credit unit than others. Your assignment is to sit down. There are courses that look like forever. Others you finish in two weeks. The school of the spirit is not like an academic institution. You can finish one class in two weeks and the next class will be three years. And yet you are not repeating. That's how the class is. The curriculum is just long enough. I hope you are learning. Mighty God. It's good to come to church. Let me say this. I'm wrapping up now. The river flows through men. This is my last thought. This great river you see, it flows through men, yielded vessels. The river flows through men. The spirit and his life-giving ministry flows through men. Let me say that again. The life-giving ministry of the Holy Spirit on earth is not independent of men. It's in partnership with men that the life-giving ministry of the Spirit as a river flows. So the Bible says, listen very carefully, that the first Adam the first Adam was made, that should be 1 Corinthians 15, 45. The first Adam was made a living soul. Are we together? And the second Adam is a life-giving spirit. Everybody say that after me. Life-giving spirit. I told you that the life God has given the believer today is not the same life Adam had. No. 
Adam was not a life-giving spirit. He was a living soul. Man today in Christ is a life-giving spirit. Jesus said, as my father has sent me, he says, so send I you. Say, I am a life-giving spirit. Say it convincingly, I am a life-giving spirit. That means my assignment is to become that vessel that allows the river to flow. Allows the river to flow. Allows the river to flow. And Ezekiel 47, there's no time. And Revelations, I wish we had time, would have gone there. Those are the two instances. We, in fact, I can give you three. From Genesis 1, Ezekiel 47, Revelations. Every time rivers flowed, they brought healing. They brought abundance. They brought power. The river that flowed from the east of Eden, dividing itself into four. Pishon, Gihon, Tigris, the Euphrates. The Bible says one had delium, one had gold. That that gold, there was gold there flowing down to Utopia. In Ezekiel 47, the four levels, the channels of the river that flowed. The Bible says every fish it touched that was dead came back to life. Revelations, there was a river that flowed from the throne of God and it watered the trees. They produced 12 kinds of fruits and those fruits were for the healing of the nations. Are we together? So when you become that vessel, you have given the Holy Spirit space to flow to the nations. Now he can send you to anywhere knowing that he has found a worthy channel to flow his life he can instruct you to put a healing meeting and you can tell someone like peter and john i come in the name of the lord rise up and walk and it it looks like it is your hand but it was just a channel allowing the power of god to flow jesus said virtue had gone out of me virtue had gone out of me he can speak to you and you can tell nations by this time tomorrow and reprogram the economic climate of nations not as a parable from one prophetic utterance but not from any vessel a vessel aligned a vessel yielded the reason why you see the things that we study here remain as parables and we keep debating them is that is the consequence of graduating ourselves without allowing the holy spirit to build us it will make what looks here become too real for us to believe it it will look like it is a lie the bible says the things that are written are for time that they are for our learning so that we through the comfort and patience of scripture might find hope there were many other miracles john chapter 20 from verse 30 and 31 many other miracles did jesus in the presence of his disciples which are not recorded in this book 31 but these are recorded that ye might believe and that in that believing you might find life through his name every recorded miracle in the bible is to stimulate you towards that end life I believe with all my heart, Pastor, that before Jesus returns, that there is a generation that will align themselves by the mercies of God. That we will become such worthy hosts, not talkers of it, demonstrators of it. That men will stand as nations. You will become as a dam, as a person. And God will flow through you. Look at the problems that plague our world. And yet the church keeps saying we are light. It is true we are light. But we are light that is not working. You know many times in the place of prayer I cry unto God. And I say God walk on us. Walk on us. Open our eyes to see the standard you have set for us. And how far short of it we have come. This should not condemn us. This should inspire us. We have done well, but the journey is still far. Let's be careful as we clap for ourselves too much. Because a student who got 30 as the highest score still failed. It's just that it's the highest among other lazy students. So we need to be careful so that we don't over pamper ourselves. You may score 30, but A is 75, not 30. So the Bible says, awake thou that sleepest. Awake. 
there is a body of light you need to have to rise look at for instance the healing ministry do you know honestly maybe it's my personal submission and let me say this if the healing power of God actually flows through us today like it did in the 60s and the 70s, I assure you by the mercies of God, most people that die today would not have died. It is a deficiency of our training. We have misrepresented the power of God through our ill preparedness laced with pride. I'm not, I'm not insulting you, I'm challenging you. This is a conference. This is the implication of the river flowing. I have a few videos of men and women by the Spirit of God who walked upon the earth. I have rare videos of their crusades, unedited. And sometimes I'm in tears as I'm watching. What kind of investment did God make in men like this? Nothing stage managed. This were the mystery of godliness that God can indwell men and demonstrate his possibilities through men. Today we talk too much we talk too much it's not an insult take it as a prophetic advice we talk too much let's go back to the school of the spirit there is still a purging there is still a walking the nations is not interested in who is shouting at our meetings they are looking for real results transcontinental results by this time tomorrow results the woman at the well dimension of results the madman of Gadara results we claim intimacy yet it has not solved any national problem we need to go back to our drawing board are we together now the Bible says let your light so shine before men now I'm not saying this to condemn I'm challenging us this is this is a believer meeting it's not a crusade I will not say this on a crusade ground I'm saying this because we are matured believers Thank God for what we have done. But let's not pamper ourselves too much. This is not a tell them, oh, include the person talking to you. We need to go back to the school of the spirit and say, Lord, thank you for what you have done. But the standard is still far. With great power, gave the witnesses, the apostles witness of the resurrection. You want to see how the power of God worked? Watch the book of Acts and see a spectacle display of the power of God handkerchiefs and aprons came from the body of the apostles how about the wisdom of God investigate the life of Daniel investigate the life of Joseph and see the wisdom of the spirit at work investigate the life of Jacob how wisdom translates to abundance that Laban had to go and consult with sorcery by what technology is this man multiplying things no disadvantage worked for him. I'm sharing my contemplations. How about the nature of Christ? You see, let me tell you this. The holiness of God is a nature, but is enhanced by the presence of certain possibilities. If you are financially comfortable, it has a way of immuning you against compromise. If you are excessively poor, you will tell lies, you will steal, and you will compromise. Not because you are bad. It's the side effect of that state. So when God really wants to help you to walk in righteousness, he gives you all the auxiliary support systems. If I am not hungry, you can't tempt me with food. So when God really wants me to stay and not eat of Pharaoh's table, he has a way of routing a supply that makes me happy and comfortable. A God that leaves you in hunger with food around you and says, don't eat, sounds like a wicked God. So we need to redefine this God we have presented to the world. Our proposal has been rejected because the Jesus we are selling to the nations is not complete. Are we together? But I believe that through conferences like this, alongside many other wonderful prophetic platforms in this nation and across the nation, there's a resurrection starting. I believe that God brought us here as a sign that something is starting. It may be small, but do not despise it.
do not despise it it took 300 men God told Gideon that this is too much I truly believe in my lifetime in my lifetime it's not our children that would spearhead this move they will join us by the grace of God we will be aligned enough that when someone says I carry the healing anointing by the message of God you will not defend it but you, you wouldn't have to cajole what about healing it's, healing should be so palpable the first visible sign of the outworkings of the spirit the first visible sign of the presence of the kingdom is healing the sick Matthew chapter 10 and verse 7 as he go preach saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand prove that verse 8 the first sign as proof is heal the sick the healing ministry should not be silent it shouldn't be something that the person is not sure whether it's headache or not well it just says i'm healed just not to embarrass you no that margin of error is not a, an effective witness these are my prayers when i pray and fast this this is the scope of my contemplations lord place grace that speaks grace that speaks this is a notable miracle the scribes and the pharisees could not deny it every genuine miracle can be verified with medicine medicine is not supposed to conflict the supernatural because the supernatural is above it if new kidneys came the machine will show it if the eyes opened the machine will show it doctors are not anti-anointing they should be the confirmations that the power of God actually came. Are we together? Do you know, I submit to you, if we sample many of the people who carry a semblance of healing through our meetings and they are verified carefully, you find out that there can be a margin of error. It may not be that they lied. Some were just emotional. Some it was just a general healing after they were on the last day of their medical recovery. So how are you sure it was not just the drugs? that just finished his work. Hmm. Recharge conference. You see why it's good to invite people to church? How about abundance? I hope you hate poverty. Let me verify that first so that I don't waste my time. I hope you hate poverty. Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, if you don't hate poverty, you will stop the program of God in a way you will not believe. I told you that one of the expressions of the river is abundance. Genesis 1, 21. He made great whales, sea creatures, and everything which the water brought forth abundantly you can bring fish out of water you can bring wealth out of the wisdom of the spirit hallelujah we are preparing to host a conference in US and Canada and I can tell you and, and, and my apologies if, if I sound arrogant or anything but I can tell you you see, but if God does not help you financially, you will go to pray and it will be as if you are conducting a burial in that place of prayer. You will just be roaming around in the room. People will think you have been praying for hours. You are worried. Why did you call me, oh God? Are we together? Many of you here are pastors. You know the implication of this. And I'm, I'm not just making empty noise. Are we together? Bills upon bills. You are smiling today because a gen is running so many things are happening here when satan wants to fight you among the many things he fights is your finances corporately and personally see every financial problem as an attack from hell i'm not talking about materialism i'm not talking about lost driven pursuit that is void of kingdom purpose no this is not what i'm talking about don't confuse what i'm talking about are we together now yes because sooner or later taking your children to good schools is a is a wiser project in helping them become greater witnesses than taking them to a school where you have to spend 10 years re-editing babylon 
Believe that or not, I leave it to you. Are we together? The river. As the river flows through you, because there are people, that is the dimension that that river will flow with. They will teach the nations how to profit for the kingdom. That a grace will be placed upon them and they will come up with a dimension. Listen, I don't believe in get rich quick. But you may have heard me, I don't believe in get rich slow. Because this, we have an assignment. If it will take me 30 years to prosper, that means I will not do the work of the kingdom. There has to be a technology. When you plant corn, one corn, is it two that comes at the end of the year? It should tell you how God increases. Something, I, I thank God for our Babylonian system, but I'm praying that by alignment and consecration, we will receive something that enhances our financial capability. Are we together now? Everyone who is involved here in crusades and programs know that it takes grace and sacrifice. Men of God empty their accounts. They do all kinds of things just for the name of Jesus. What sort of a God will send people and not send a system for your efficiency? Even the king, when Nehemiah pleaded and said, let me go to my people. He said, I will give you resources. I will write letters. Nehemiah, the king. Once it's 10 minutes, we'll pray. We'll use the remaining 10 minutes to pray. It will be a cry from the Spirit. Hallelujah. There are some of you in ministry now. The major problem is not anointing. The major problem is not consecration. The major problem is finances. True or false? It is the reason why we have idolized men. Because the one who can give you tea and bread, even if you don't want, he has to become the Holy Spirit. And it ought not to be so. Vain is the help of man. But there has to be a technology from heaven. And this is the assignment of the river. When you allow that river flow through you, in you, part of the training process is how to be equipped to be a faithful witness. He will give you a strategy. If it is the God of heaven, he will never send you to war without telling you how he will equip you. When I sent thee, lackest thou anything. Not when you went, when I sent you. The strategy God will give you is not a universal strategy. Let me tell you the truth. I'm not ignorant of business financial strategies, investment strategies. Those, they are wonderful. But there is a strategy unique to the assignment of the kingdom. Are we together now? The world system does not serve God with their resources, nor are they prepared to invest in the business of the kingdom. Don't confuse the world economy and kingdom economy. There is a vow upon the wealth of the, the world that Jesus will not be revealed through that wealth. So don't make a mistake of believing that just entirely following that financial principle will prosper you. No. In addition to that, you can learn it. There is something God shows you that is unique to the assignment he has given you. So the prophet said, by this time, tomorrow. You don't find that in any economic book. But that was how supplies came. The days of Jehoshaphat, people went to war carrying bags of gold. And when they died there, the people came and packed the gold. Before Jesus returns, a great man of God, he's gone, to be in, he's gone to be with the Lord now. He left a prophecy that there were two ministers in the body of Christ that if they die, God told him it's going to be a signification of the restoration of the healing anointing. One of them was Reinhard Bonke. The other one was Billy Graham. Now, there have been many variations of that prophecy, but he said when these two men God revealed to him when they pass on to glory, the body of Christ must begin to be sensitive in alignment, in consecration, in prayer because certain wines will begin to be poured upon the body. And let me tell you this without sounding biased. Africa and even Nigeria has a pivotal 
apostolic assignment to the nations before Christ returns. It is not that we are better than other nations. It is the privilege of the election of grace. Are we together? It is the reason why from every quarter in this nation, God is raising. Raising others who are raising others. Raising others who are training others. Raising others who are using their pain to fine tune others. It is a build up of momentum because this final global harvest cannot be done by one person no matter how effective this church is called a global impact church are we together that means it is by its name a center that must be involved in this project there is something we are exporting from this nation we may not export technology i hope we do before christ comes we can't guarantee exporting certain things but there is a commodity money cannot buy. Our export is life. Life in its entirety. We may be that rejected stone, but I tell you, God is looking for men. Life-giving spirits, they are called. Life-giving spirits. They will give businesses life. They will give ministries life. They will give dead bodies life. That you come and see that someone has died. I'm not saying he's dying. Not clinically dead. Actually dead. And without stage managing anything I come as a life-giving spirit an extension of that river that everywhere the fish was as the river came it came back to life that once again our crusades will become places of encounter not entertainment not that people will stand listen one of the fathers of faith in this nation I was told that how he got born again was that he was strolling around the crusade of one other father of faith who had gone. Just strolling around. That an unbeliever would be strolling around the crusade ground carrying cancer, carrying sickness. And that crusade is being spearheaded by a vessel who can allow the river to flow. Shamanda Kaparatas. Our fathers were not so educated. We were discussing the, that yesterday. But my God, this man had power. They could not speak. They didn't really have the investment of God's wisdom. But one thing you could not deny was the power of God. Many of us came from their biological descent. And yet we have not received the power component. Where is the wisdom of Jacob that multiplied the speckled animals? Show me a proof that you are carrying it. Statistically, let me see what you have done with your business. Show me the advantage of the Holy Spirit in addition to your education. Let me see his advantage in your business. Let me see his advantage in your parenting. It's the reason why people hate the Holy Spirit. Because we have not shown the value of having him. Listen, we respect technological companies today because they have proven through our life the value of their products. Am I right on that? There are more people who follow social media than Christians on earth. There are more people who patronize certain apps that are barely 10 years old because they came up with ideas whose value the world could relate with. We are selling a Jesus whose value is not applicable to our world. We are selling a spirit concept. The world is saying, I don't need him. You have not demonstrated his value in the world of men. Listen. Go and download or buy this tape. Listen to it and give it to anybody you love. Not because I'm the one who preached it. This is the voice of the spirit to the nations. Look beyond the man. Go and get this tape. Get this teaching. Listen to it again. We must raise a cry. Cry. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. we need to trust God and extend and for those of you who are rising in ministry let me advise you please in the name of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Spirit don't be too quick to shout around stay when you see the father silent learn from their wisdom this ministry thing when you start running anyhow by yourself you will stop even without an attack 
make sure you build the stamina for survival. He told Elijah, eat for the journey is far. Hallelujah. Eat. Thank God for all the mighty apostolic platforms, including this church that we have. And I pray that they become places of training, raising a mighty army for God. Are we together? Now we are going to pray. For the next two or three minutes, I don't know how you are going to pray, but imagine you are the only one in this auditorium. And for those following, I want you to cry before God. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Oh, let the river flow. Let it flow in me first. Let it flow in me first. Let it flow in me first. Purge in me. Let it flow in me first. Building the nature of Christ in me. Let it flow in me first. Building the wisdom of Christ in me. Let it flow in me first. Building authentic apostolic power. Authentic apostolic power. Please pray. Breathe, Lord, breathe. Breathe, Lord, breathe. Breathe upon my life. Breathe, Lord, breathe. Breathe, Lord, breathe. Upon my life, I receive, I manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up, exalted. I receive, I manifest. Your power and your wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up, glorified. Keep praying. Breathe, Lord, breathe, breathe, Lord, breathe, breathe upon my life. Breathe, Lord, breathe. See Jesus lifted up, exalted till the nations. See Jesus lifted up, glorified. Malega parakata parataka belegata. But in a great house, there are vessels of clay, wood, silver, and gold. Some are unto honor and some are unto dishonor. If a man will forge himself, Lakata prakata belakata, shatam bakata praskate, lakata proskate belakatos, emprakata bakata prakata belakata. More power, greater wisdom, shaba lakata parentes yata. Let me be that vessel. The river flows in men, then it flows through men. The river flows in men to overflow. Then it flows through men to the sick, through men to the downcast, through men to the nations. Let it flow through me. That's your prayer this morning. Let it flow through my ministry. Let it flow through my business. Spirit of the living God, a yielded vessel is calling you. A consecrated vessel is crying to you. A desperate vessel needs you. Come as that river. Come as that river. Come as that river. 
Malike Barakatabatas has that river. Has that river. Please pray one more minute. And as the river flows, it begins to bring every dead thing to life. It's a life giving river. Oh, let it flow right here, right now. And as the river flows, it begins to bring every dead thing to life. It's a life giving river. Oh, let it flow right here, right now. Out of my belly shall flow rivers, rivers of living water. Out of my belly shall flow rivers, rivers of living water. Let the river flow from a yielded businessman. Let the river flow from a yielded apostle. Let the river flow from a yielded prophet. Let the river flow from a yielded captain of industry. A yielded student. A yielded prayer warrior. A yielded missionary. A yielded evangelist. Let the river flow from a yielded financial apostle. Let the river flow from a yielded prophet. And then Sabalakata, we're wrapping up. For many of you here, the Spirit of God is calling you calling you calling you beyond ministry calling you beyond conferences calling you hear the word of the spirit is calling you deeper calling you to a place of power calling you to a place where Christ is formed in you where his character is furnished coming as a life-giving river burning away everything seeing that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses it says let us lay aside every weight and the sin that doth easily beset us and to run with perseverance the race that is set before us hallelujah a new season God sent me here to break a fountain open this is my assignment here the life giving river flows through life giving spirits the life giving river flows through transformed men the life giving river flows through empowered men it starts by flowing into you, transforming you, purifying you, cleansing you, empowering you. Then it flows from out of you to the nations as healing streams to the nations as streams of abundance, as streams of restoration, as streams of, of liberty, as streams of life. Thank 
In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. I release grace. The grace to stay until you are formed, transformed, purified, empowered. Let that grace called the staying power, let it rest upon you. The grace to stay until his walking is complete. The grace to not be carried away by the flamboyancy of ministry. The grace to stay until you become a furnished vessel that can do much for the kingdom. May that grace rest upon you. And then I pray for you, for as many who have stayed and stayed, sometimes stayed like fools. In the name of Jesus, I come by the rod of the apostolic and the prophetic and I open a new season. Let this be the season where the evidence of your transformation becomes clear to the nations. The evidence of your fasting and prayer becomes clear to the nations. The evidence of your consecration becomes clear to the nations. The evidence of your secret givings, let it become evident to the nations. The evidence of your intercession, help the lady, let it become clear to the nations. The evidence of your loving Jesus, let it become clear to the nations. And every power that fights you, fights your rising, fights your becoming, fights your manifesting. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, I speak to every spirit that is not of the Christ, that it be banished from your life, banished from your experience, banished from your space, in the name of Jesus Christ. That to carry this consciousness forever, that the life-giving river flows only through life-giving spirits. It can flow into any spirit, but it only flows out from life-giving, transformed and empowered spirits. May the Lord bless you. In Jesus' name. Can we pray in tongues a bit? Just pray in the spirit a bit. Just pray in the spirit a bit for like 30 seconds. Just pray in the spirit a bit. Just pray in the spirit a bit. Le prado stangalado korobada garaga de kotosele baradeda ando stolo hombre de tata katosa prade kosota la kare anglada para koso la plane kate kosa la prade havana de kostanda da keste la ke prade ostongo I receive I receive I manifest, I manifest, I enter a new season. I manifest, I manifest. I receive all that God has released. I receive all that God has released. I manifest, I flow I, in alignment with God's agenda. I flow in alignment with God's agenda. I flow in alignment with God's agenda for the new season of the body of Christ. I align my family, I align my marriage, I align the ministry he has placed in my hands. I align myself, I align, I align, Holy Spirit, I align. Somebody just praying, just praying for yourself. Just praying for yourself, praying for yourself by declaring, by declaring, by declaring. Your tongue helps you to align, so what you are saying is directing your destiny. So I align, I manifest. I am a candidate. I am a candidate. I'm chosen. I am a candidate. I register. Oh, for this new assignment. I, I, I register. I align. I, 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 I put myself available. Here I am. Send me. I align. My household aligns. My finances aligns. My time aligns. My, my, my emotions aligns. All of me aligns. Holy Spirit, here I am. I register. I put myself out. Yes. 
Fit. I fit in, I fit in into the place you have proposed for me. The very place, the very agenda, your very model. I complete the training. I fulfill the trainings. I align, I align. All about my destiny aligns. I register today, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. I, 